It's so quiet. I don't understand. But if you're very quiet, maybe you can hear it. Barely. I can barely hear it. I'm assuming you can't hear it at all and you think I'm a crazy person. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, it's really not, but it's okay. Um, but it's not. Uh, but it's fine. No. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Uh, so, I was reading this morning in uh, 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 the book I'm reading and in scripture about the joy uh, that is, this is my whole thing, exploring joy right now, and being, uh, finding my own joy, finding my own joy, pursuing my own joy and happiness. It sounds crazy to me for whatever reason. Maybe this sounds perfectly normal to many of you. Um, that's not something I was, I've ever been that preoccupied with my own happiness uh, and my own joy. I've kind of deliberately had turned from it many times, many ways throughout my life. Um, and so I'm rediscovering how much joy God is commanding me to have and that he is the source of all that. And he has many tools in his arsenal to, uh, to deliver that. And the one I was sort of reading about today was, uh, was scripture and the word of God. And I've always loved books and I loved... Uh, even when our family would go to the beach when I was a kid, I would sit in the car and I would read books while people went and played in the ocean. Uh, and many books affected me, but no books have divinely affected me and shaken me to the core and restored my soul quite like the Bible has, the Word of God. And I know a lot of people have a lot of problems with that whole aspect that it's the Word of God, but man physically wrote it. I believe in a an eternal and a loving and a uh, an omnipotent God. So for me, like, there's really no big leap in logic there. I truly believe if God wanted, he could turn my head into the head of a platypus right now. And I wouldn't be like, I mean, obviously it would be somewhat shock, shocking, but not like, wouldn't be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe such a thing happened. I can totally believe it. Um, uh, so I was reading and how scripture uh, is supposed to give us joy, or how, how it can give us joy. And so, um, let me just read some. Uh, principle, first and foremost, is the way in which faith and then which scriptures themselves uh, give us hope. Which it also says, I enjoy this, uh, Romans 5, uh, 3 through 4. We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces hope which is interesting right the suffering you think would produce like strength would produce uh you know clarity of vision would produce uh blessing would but but no actually in and of itself the hope that suffering is for a purpose or is 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 to an end or is will end or that you can endure all suffering through the mighty spirit of god is in, in of itself the per the end of the production line, that hope in and of itself, which I think is really, really powerful thing to hold on to. Um, anyway, back to the scripture part. Uh, Romans fifteen four, whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. So the Bible, just like suffering, just like life, just like the restorative blessings that that God can and will and does grant you. Uh, those who, who enter into a covenant joyful uh, relationship with him uh, scripture itself uh, produces hope and is this like and it's a, it's, a, it's a physical thing too because much of, of faith and communion with a God that you can feel and hear and, and but you can't see and taste and touch you can't necessarily always use the same senses you use to establish 
veracity in so many other areas. Um, except maybe love. Well, certain, many other areas you use the same things that you recognize God with and speak to God with. But nonetheless, uh, it's, it's it's somewhat outside of the physical, uh, uh, you know, this this realm. Uh, but he knows that we need that. So in, in many ways, I think the the word of God is a is a hugely crucial and would be a lacking thing. I mean, again, again to not uh, to avoid conflict because ultimately people are going to be like, no, God said this, ah, God said this, rah rah rah. So for for us to have a especially people coming, then you're coming to to worship God and you know whatever the way that uh, uh, church has evolved. Uh, is that there will be speaking on, you know, this is, and this is what Christ said, and this is what we are called to do. And uh, thanks to the Word of God, and probably some minor props to, in the very least to Martin Luther, um, that we are able to, you are able to cross-reference. Wait, what did God really say? What does God want for my life? And it helps, it's almost this, uh, again, it's this nice, ta I find beautiful, tangible, uh, physical thing in which you can enter into a, like a physical communion with God and God, what do you want from my life? You know, and sometimes we get so lost. You can do prayer works wonders and is it majestic and beautiful and uh, an ecstatic communion. Sometimes, though, in those moments when you're like, "Wow, I'm not," you're not really saying much. I'm not getting much from this. Uh, he's already told us so much about who he is and who we are, and what a what a glorious uh, document to be able to commit to our hearts and lend, fill our hearts with hope. And from hope, joy. Back to the joy. Um, John 8.32, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Eh, 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 eh. Hebrews uh, 12.14, oh no, here we go. Uh, Psalm 19.7-8. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. I love that. And then Psalm 119, 105. Uh, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Scripture can be such a... a is a divine source of joy in that way, too, in that light. Like I was just talking about, when you're in those moments of sluggishness or darkness... It's like there, and you're like, where's your light, Lord? I don't know where your light is right now for whatever reason because we're all caught up in our own suffering most of the time. Uh, and we're all like looking down and looking at our thing. But lit scripture is a, is a permanent thing that you literally can reach out and grab That is that that is a reflection of that light. I think that's gorgeous. It's a flashlight with red letters in it. Um, 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 um. Oh, another uh, purpose of scripture, huge one. First uh, John five thirteen. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you might know that you have eternal life. Huge, huge. Especially because I'm really trying to explore this whole like reward aspect, and not fearing reward, divine reward, you know, and not fearing divine happiness, and not fearing divine joy, but running to it and embracing it bracing it holy you know um ba -ba 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 -ba. and there was one last one i wanted to read or a couple ones anyway other reasons that scripture can uh restore and be lovely uh psalm 19 8 the precepts of the lord are right rejoicing the heart Psalm 119, 16, I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Statutes, by the way. I sort of mispronounced that a little bit. Uh, oh, what a sculpture. Uh, Psalm 90, verse 97, 119, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Verse uh, 111, Your testimonies are my heritage forever, for they are the joy of my heart. This one, probably my favorite of all, and I'll end on this. Jeremiah 15, 16, your words were found, and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name. So get yourself into some scripture and manja. Manja!